Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast episode 245. I'm Mike Sorg. It's April 21st, 2015. And it's a very special edition of the Awesome Cast. We like to get geeky, talk tech, and uh, have some fun on here with the people using this stuff. And and this week, it's more consumer-based a little bit. Uh, we do, but, but, but our expertise is consumer-based this week because this is our cord-cutting hardware X uh, special that we're going to get into all the dongles and boxes that we use to watch our television and television type things on our uh, television device. That got weird for a moment there. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters and uh, with me first of all from Studio B he's the regular he's John Shitshilla at Shilla on the Twitter. He looks dressed up for the occasion. Yeah I'd, I'd never changed out of my work clothes. <laughs> 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 well, at least there's a reason. Um, and also with us on the couch, first of all, if I get my mouse in the right place, we have Doug Durda coming back to us at Douglas Durda on the Twitter. It's DouglasDurda.com. Also, should I drink that.com? Correct. I am here because I was told I can dingle dangle my dongle. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not dangle talk. Dangle dongle. Welcome dangle. to dangle. Welcome to dangle talk. Where we talk about the dongles and the dangles. The dangles. The dangles. <laughs> I want to see your dangles and your dongles. Also with <laughs> us is Katie Dudas. <laughs> Katie Dudas on the Twitter, and I can't wait till we talk about the box she brought. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, I'm having a piece for a pie. <laughs> oh geez, is the awesome cast? I didn't even let her say anything. <laughs> you have something to say? No. The great people. No. Like no, that's no. Enough. I don't even want to be associated with you guys right now. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.net. We're not usually, we only, there's, there's just double entendres. We try to end there. Um, but so we have a, a talk tech every week uh, and a, a, the daily mini Awesome Cast over there. Please subscribe to us. We're on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and so many other places you can find us. And please email us, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast and check out our Facebook page and group as well as us on Google+. You can join us here live.awesomecast.net, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, roundabout, every Tuesday. And uh, so let's get into it. Usually we get our awesome things of the week, but it's just a giant awesome thing smorgasbord, and we have a couple uh, non-core cutty things to talk about at the end. But uh, let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, uh, well, let's get in. Whoa, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, that wasn't down here? Okay, <laughs> that was you guys. I so didn't do that. <laughs> all right and it was probably the cat uh so let's <laughs> let's let's start with the dongles i i think i think this is the most i think it's the one that most of us have have tried and I, I think it's the most recommended i actually saw this uh the chromecast was actually on groupon this week for 20 dollars. wow refurbished though mm -hmm. um I, I, that's a great price mm -hmm. first off i think it's the easiest access point for most people yeah for 35 dollars. now if you're not familiar the chromecast is a dongle this plugs into the back of your HDMI. If you're not familiar with like some of the stuff we're talking about, it's just a little stick that you plug into the HDMI. There's going to be a cord that comes off that's a USB cord, and it'll have a plug adapter. And uh, or sometimes you have a USB in the side of your uh, TV. I do for like you're supposed to, you know, you'll, you'll plug photos in there on, on, a, on a thumb drive, and so you don't even have to have an extra cord coming off of the TV. Um, but and and you don't have a remote. That's part of the reason it's so cheap. You use your phone, your tablet on the same network, uh, iPhone. Uh, you know, actually, you can actually use a, a plug-in on Chrome on your on your laptop, and uh, in most things are out there. Um, so, like I said, I think most of us have uh, one of these. Uh, what are your impressions of it so far? We're well over a year, uh, actually, about a year and a half of, of having these things. I've had a let's see, I've had the Chrome Stick for oh geez, I think since last summer, and it's the reason why I decided to cut the cord. Okay, because it made it incredibly easy to to get rid of cable. Mm -hmm. uh, setup is is a snap. Honestly, it says what's your Wi-Fi network, what's your password, and that's it. it does everything for you. Uh, my ha my house is pretty much PC. Yeah, and at work I'm I'm on a Mac, but you've got the Chrome plugin for it, mm -hmm. which is 
makes everything a snap too. Uh, what I love with the PC and with my Droid phone is that sending stuff to the TV is incredibly easy. Like it, really, you push one button, you hit send to Chromecast, and that's it. Yeah. So really, anybody can with a Droid phone or with a Mac or PC can send pictures or video or stream your YouTube to it. I've been playing with that with a. I have the Nexus tablet and it has the 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 stream that ca- cast. Uh, a, a page or something like that and, and that's been really nice and actually bailed me out when i was having problems one night with like google google video wasn't working very well i kept buffering until i did the screencast and i could but then i couldn't turn the tablet off so little weird things like that tend to happen um i do get every once in a while uh, uh applications like like it didn't close out of the one that we were using like it maybe didn't close out completely on netflix and it won't load hulu entirety so i try to cast something else to kind of boot it off of there um but for me like a lot of times like i i do a lot of work just sitting in my living room and i have a tv on and whatever and and to be able to like pop pull up youtube and just fling things like that's the coolest feeling is like oh i want to watch this i don't want to take up some of my laptop screen and let's just throw it to the tv you know um it, it really kind of makes that a little more flexible I've noticed with the Chrome plugin, if you're doing it in multiple tabs, like if you're in one tab and you're casting and you go over to another tab, like the video ends and it's it just kind of sits there and you want to cast, for, say, from another tab for whatever reason, you're either working in one, it will hang itself up unless you disconnect it right away. Right. And that's, I mean, that's a small irritation to it, but it's not like a, a deal breaker or anything. It's, I paid 35 bucks for it. Exactly. It you, depends you, what I'm working if on. If you're doing, if you're, if you're throwing stuff from your browser, I think you're kind of more in power user territory. It does get confusing when I'm like, okay, if I hit the Chromecast button on the corner of this YouTube video, is it going to automatically kick off that video or is it going to add it to a playlist? Because when I do get it going and you have a TV Mm -hmm. queue, then, you know, if you're watching a bunch of shorter stuff, like I like to watch SourceFed and and I'll just hit the playlist for the day and then I have a playlist of of everything they did for the day. And for SourceFed is kind of like a, well, you know, two, three, four minute, like kind of news comedy ish thing um and uh and then i can just pour through those and it's just running while i'm doing whatever i'm doing in the background and i kind of create a little bit of that streaming whatever's on but i selected it kind of situation well the chromecast is how i watch the show too yeah and what i found out i have to do in some instances if someone's using uh it's if they're not using youtube to, to produce the video what i've had to do in the past was uh, I'd have to open it in a separate tab. And it, when you start to become, I guess you could say, the power user for using web browsers, you kind of have those workarounds for, okay, how can I open this video in a separate tab that's so it's going to show up as a tab and not you know, with your menu options and not just a window. Mm-hmm. And then I have to blow that up full screen. But it's I've watched all the shows on my Chromecast, no problem. It's nice to be able to sit back on my couch and not be stuck to a... Uh, to a mm-hmm. laptop to watch it. It has been nice. Like uh, I've I've also found um, like like watching certain things, and I don't want to take over my entire screen because I don't want it. Maybe the computer's not fast enough, and I kind of remote into another computer and then cast <laughs> from a computer in another room to my Chromecast on the network. <laughs> so I so I still have my full on. So I have my laptop. So I'm talking with the guys on a Hangout. I don't want, because that's going to take up, because because Google Hangout takes up a lot of your CPU, even on a mm-hmm. fast MacBook. And you're going to see the sketchiness kind of happen. Um, and, 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 and you don't need, it doesn't go full screen. You just, if, you, if you're casting that tab, and you hit full screen, it will just fill your screen with whatever resolution that was mm-hmm. and stretch it out for you. So it's been really nice. Uh, Chilla, I know you've been playing with Chromecast too, right? I've been playing with it. And I'll be honest with you, it's my least favorite <laughs> of all of the devices. I can understand why. I can definitely. So one of the things, and it's great if you're the only one using it or it's the only thing in that room. My problem is the, okay, I'm casting something and now I leave for work. Mm-hmm. And I take my phone with me or mm-hmm. I take my laptop with me. Now you got to shut it down and you got to flip users I just, I want something that I turn it on and the menu is embedded. Um, the one thing I will say, I do like the fact that it kind of has the short USB cord and it's funny because I have the TV I have it on actually has, it's an older TV, but it still has the USB port and it says for diagnostics only, <laughs> but obviously it's enough to power the, the, the device. So it works yeah. perfectly. But that being said is the, the whole idea of, I have to cast something there or I have to 
do this, that, or the other. I have to open the app, then I have to start something playing, hit cast. I, I'm not a huge, I'm not, I don't like the, the interface and the user experience that it provides. I, I would much rather have one of the other devices that, that we'll be talking about tonight. Um, but that being said, I will say it's the perfect starter device for someone that wants to test the waters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with this type of technology. And I like the fact that they've started to bring more of the multi-user game experience into this. Yes. I think at Christmas time we saw like they had Monopoly. They started to really upplay the games that you could play together on the TV. Um, I think that concept, I wish Android would have, have, have picked that up and ran with it a little bit further. I'm seeing the same issue with Android Wear right now. And one of the other things that I don't know, Doug, if you've seen it on, on any of your devices, but casting the screen from an Android device, depending on the device, a lot of my devices, I get this weird prompt that says, you know, this device isn't optimized to be able to do this. And you can still do it. It's just sometimes glitchy and, and doesn't always look correct. I've been able to do it from my phone, but from a Droid tablet, I've had issues. Yeah. And it's, it's weird, too, because Android Lollipop is supposed to have it embedded, mm -hmm. that whole cast experience. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing more and more devices, like my Nexus, it works perfectly. Um, but I'm, I have a, a Samsung device and, and some other test devices where... It, it, like it's like they ripped that part of lollipop off the device or maybe it's because it's there's a there's an alternate launcher kind of sitting on top i don't know the the shade pull down it's not in there um but i am looking forward i i, I do try to use it when i can i just need something i feel i feel like i want something that has a better user experience and is more on its own mm -hmm. so uh, and others do you have any uh chromecast experiences Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't. I when I've casted from my Samsung tablet, I haven't had an issue. I'm, but that just could be mine. I don't my note. But um, I haven't had an issue as far as anything uh, giving me problems or anything popping up. But that just mm -hmm. could be me. Um, I love. I like it because it's it like it's an easy thing to do. Like I've talked about a million times. It's something that I got my mom on and she watches Netflix constantly on it. And I'm getting bumped out of Netflix because she's on it now, <laughs> which is just not cool. But, <laughs> but she's, she's, she's able to use it and she's able to dive into it. She's comfortable and she goes right off her phone or even, you know, her tablet and she's going into town and she's fine. And I think it's fun and it's silly. I, I don't know. Like I haven't played with this as much with other apps as I will be streaming something on Netflix uh, I was watching friends while talking on the phone and texting, like <laughs> while doing like, you know, as many things as I could with my one device at one time. But I was, it was, it, there was not an issue at all. It, it, right. showed, it just right. kept playing. Well, and just, well that's, that's your distinction. Yeah. I know it feels like you're, you know, it's going through your phone, but it's mm -hmm. really handing off that mm -hmm. processing to the tablet. So even though it is feeding back and you're getting the, uh, you know, you're, you're getting the controls and everything, uh, it, that, stick is actually taking over the video streaming and, and and you can still do stuff on your phone whereas if you're casting a tab or something like that you know it, it's doing the processing on your computer and sending that visual over and you do see some performance issues um anywhere you say you see the screen disappear and it says uh, uh viewing on chromecast it is is happening on that device not on whatever whatever you're using even a laptop if you're using like the youtube tab so they're doing more with the device too aren't they where yeah, on newer HDMI ports, it can get right like certain types of commands back from the TV, right, and like right. your volume it, up and volume down can work. And I'm not sure about volume, back. but I know like the play, fast forward, uh, rewind kind of functions, play pause stuff like that could work if you have that on your remote for any reason. So I think mostly smart TVs, which we'll get into a little bit later, because they'll already have that on there. So, okay, so Chromecast, I think we're kind of resoundingly like, yeah, it's kind of worth it for 35 bucks. You kind of can't beat it, um, but not for families. <laughs> so, what was that? You all right over there? Oh, I was going to add, see, I'm not, I'm just not a fan. <laughs> but it's a good starting point. It, it's a good starting point. It's, it's a good the, starting it's the point. Perfect, it's the perfect entry price. Okay. It's, it's the perfect thing for, I think, like a party of one let's mm -hmm. let's exactly exactly uh when you're, you don't have to teach the wife how to do it right yeah um so or or the family or the babysitter it's, it's not babysitter yeah. proof that's definitely not the case <laughs> 
so let's stick on let's stay on the stick side uh, mostly because I think most of us experienced the stick version of this. The uh, Am- 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 Amazon, yes. Uh, Amazon, <laughs> the Amazon, <laughs> Amazon Fire TV. The Amazing the Amazon. <laughs> the Am- well, the Amazon Fire TV in general kind of goes together. There's a stick version, there's a box, there's a box version. Um, but uh, I, I think most of us have experienced the stick. I have been uh, since they had that special for Prime. Did, who, did anybody else pick that up? I, I can't re- recall. Am I the only one with the Fire I've TV? I've used it, but it, I don't have one. Yeah, right, right. It, so one. you get a little bit more when you have the box. You have uh, a few more ports. Uh, if you have like a PlayStation 4 controller or something, I think if you have an Xbox 360 controller, you can plug it directly in because it has an extra USB. You can't do it on the stick. Uh, so I still want to purchase that controller. That, that's one cool, cool thing about it is... I've downloaded some of the games on the stick, and they look like Xbox 360 games to me. They're not terribly complex or anything, sometimes racing games, stuff like that. But on a big, for, crossy roads on a 42-inch television is amazing. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that kind of accessibility and that kind of option. There's actually another game, this is a kind of Bomberman-ish game that you can play multiplayer. You actually download an app to your phone, and that's the controller. So you can have more than four, like, oh, it, it pops up. You ran out of controllers, go download the app. You guys can all play this. Um, and generally, it, it, it I, I bought it because it didn't have, uh, Chromecast doesn't have access yet for WWE Network. And there was one more, uh, the Amazon stuff. I was still using my Xbox 360, and I'm like, I hate having to boot this thing up. Why not? Let's try this out. And that's mainly the thing. Now, I have... I, and it's really nice, really great interface, comes with the controller, So, but and they do have an app for all the phones now, so you don't necessarily have to use the controller, or if you lost it, like a lot of people will. And you can pay a little bit more and get the voice version of the uh, controller, too. Um, it weighs in at, I think, $40 for just the uh, stick itself with, uh, with, the, with the regular controller, and actually $100 if you're looking at the box version of this. Um, but... It, it, has basically everything you could think of app wise um but of course it's going to be amazon first um all the cool uh stuff like x-ray that just came out that uh pops up everybody that's on the screen and 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 you can find information as you're kind of watching the show like that's only on amazon stuff at least for now i think the voice search doesn't really dig into absolutely everything like like if a show's on does it yeah it's from what i know it's amazon only yeah um and it's not cross like if you had if you had the Netflix app on there or HBO Go or 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 whatever, um, and you said search for uh, search for uh, Marvel, mm-hmm. it's not going to pull Marvel content from Netflix and from HBO. It's only going to pull from its stuff, and that's where I think the first the the, the first company that that solves for that solution from a voice perspective, I think is going to be able to definitely cash in on that and feature. Didn't, didn't Google TV partially solve that, except nobody used the Google TV? Like, their search <laughs> was supposed to be across all all the platforms, like Hulu, Netflix, everything. But I think your your app has to have some plugins or something like that, and a lot of app developers, I don't think, have started to include it, but that's actually one of the reasons why I wouldn't mind looking at the, the Nexus. They have a Nexus TV. It's kind of like the puck type design like the Amazon Fire TV box mm-hmm. piece. Um, but yes, I think that that is coming, and I think that's also their play on how they're hooking apps kind of up into Google Now, um, where other apps can can alert now and now can read into those apps. I think that's that's part of that concept. Mm-hmm. Well, like I say, again, it's only, uh, I think, $5 more than what you have for a Chromecast right now. Of course, I think you can probably get Chromecast a little bit cheaper these days because it's been around long enough. And get a little bit of discount, but um, I think it's like you know I, I think this probably leans more towards you know the issues that you had, Chilla. You know, it's something with a remote, something you can just pass to somebody. Um, I know, I know, my wife likes just picking up the remote and using it. I think more than the Chromecast part. Um, I do see issues with performance. Comparatively, I like the picture on the Chromecast better. It seems darker, a little richer in comparison. Maybe I'm the only one that notices this, um, but but it, but it also seems that I have glitches more often. I, and my big comparison points are Hulu. Now Hulu, if I'm going to have a problem with one of the devices, it's going to be on Hulu. And I, I I've it's, had issues with Hulu on right. the PC. Well, then I haven't used Hulu in a long time, so let me let me caveat this story with that. But I, I've had 
Hulu glitchiness on the Xbox on right. the big time on Xbox on multiple platforms, and that's actually one of the reasons why that turned me off to subscribing to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I took the free trial, had crappy, uh, crappy result. It was like, okay, next. Um, and, and even like to the point, and this, I don't know if this service or this or, or what, but uh, WWE Network, I've been having problems when I. Uh, sometimes it buffers, um, you know, and, you know, there's going to be something going on, but I have a better time with it on the Amazon stick watching a live stream than I did on the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 it would pause and, 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 and catch up. And, and on this, the only thing that happens is it actually takes you back about five to ten seconds and you, it just replays a moment. <laughs> so you have a little Matrix moment where they repeated something, um, which is I will take that watching a live pay-per-view over some of the other options. Um, but then, like, I was doing a thing where I was going back and watching all the WrestleManias leading up to WrestleMania this year. And it would get caught up. Like, I'd go to resume something and it would keep popping back to, to the start of the WrestleMania. And it's like, I'm like two hours into this thing and I have to go find the spot again. Um, little inconsistencies there. It seems to crash every once in a while. And WB Network is the biggest thing I'm using on this, of course. Of course, everything Amazon is smooth on it. Um, Netflix is a nice interface. Um, and, and, and sometimes I like to prefer that if I just like, I just, and it's the thing that I'm like, uh, the remote sitting here. I don't feel like fussing around, make sure my phone's on the right Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. Of course I have like three or four Wi-Fi's around here. So it's kind of my own problem. Um, but, uh, and like I said, and I'm wondering if putting it on a different thing, I've heard about people having problems when they have too many boxes and dongles around their TV and they, and they like interfere, uh, Wi-Fi wise. And your, your actual access points will do that too. Um, You'll probably want to think you would, I would urge you to, there's actually something built into the Mac that lets you see kind of cross interference between them. Oh, okay. They're all running on the same spectrum. If you don't switch the channel settings, that'd probably be good. Cause I do have an AC router right next to a G router. Yeah. Like so they'll, they'll kind of like conflict right at times if they're, so. if they're on the same channel, we, we see that actually at, at work where people will spin up a bunch of hotspots on their phone. Oh. At the same time, so they're all broadcasting. At the same time, there's corporate Wi-Fi. We just got corporate Wi-Fi. Woo! Um, <laughs> but it actually, you, we, we've actually done a bunch of diagnostic tests. So that is one thing. I, to your point of trying to spread out the devices, which from the the HDMI perspective, I know like Chromecast, I think came with like a little HDMI extender, um, as well as trying to segregate if you have multiple Wi-Fi. Um, hotspots in your house or, or um, routers in your house. The one thing I will say about the Amazon Fire TV, I know a bunch of people at work that got them mm-hmm. and they, I have never heard a negative comment about it. Right. Um, especially from the aspect of family gaming. Um, they, they say that they're, they're, they're trying to move their kids off of the bigger consoles and the Amazon Fire TV has definitely led them in that direction, not Certainly. only from a cost of video game, but from the amount of video games they can grab their kids for one tenth of the price of a, of a regular video game. And it, and it provides family fun time um, for everyone. I, I don't know if the Fire TV does it much like the Kindle does it. I've heard a lot of positive things about the Kindle with kids mm-hmm. because you can set... Right. You're allowed you, to play you, you one, can do that one with hour this too. of games per day. You can do that with this too, to I believe. It. And yeah. I think you can also set parental controls for how much television they watch as well. So right. yeah, I have the I've got the Fire HD seven. Yeah. And it's uh, that's like one of the most fantastic things you can have on it. Mm-hmm. It's and, 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 it is, and the games, like even <laughs> on the it. stick, like the game, like some of the higher end games yeah. won't download on it. But like, like I'm like, I, I, I still like, I really got to drop the forty dollars on the controller because some of these games look good. And this was the promise we had. We talked about Ouya before, which was that kickstarted Android based oh, console. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other ones that did and didn't pop up. Um, and this is this is Amazon's delivering on that. Uh, with this, I mean, it's Android gaming. Like I said, it looks as good as a 360 thing. And when you're looking at a $40 thing and a $40 controller for maybe $10 games, including Toy Story is listed in this, by the way. So you already got Disney going on there. Ooh. And then, you know, then you're looking at a $400 Xbox or even a three of the $400 Nintendo. You're going to pick this. The kid's not going to know either way. 
Well, that, that was one of the big things I saw probably two to three years ago, right around Christmas time, all these parents coming to me at work asking about the iPod touch mm-hmm. and the, the catalyst for the iPod touch wasn't, I want to get my kids an Apple device. The catalyst for the iPod touch was I want to get my kids a device where instead of paying $40 for a Nintendo DS game, I can get them a $10 iTunes gift card and they just got 10 games. Right. Um, right. Not to mention the free, free games and, and whatnot. So, so that's where I could see these types of boxes really moving the moving forward the interesting thing and I, i'm not like i said i'm not familiar enough with the the fire tv mm-hmm. but apple has done a really good job of cross device game saves and and allowing you to start on your phone continue on your tablet microsoft's really hitting it hitting in that direction i don't I'd be interested to, i'd be interested to know if i have a game on my Kindle Fire, and I have it on my Fire TV. Is it and, and when I play when I'm away from my house, and I come back and I pick up the controller? Does it let you kind of take off from where from from where you left off on the alternate device? I think it depends because I know the the best things I see on the uh, iOS devices like are ones that actually do it via some other cloud service, like all of the WB games, like Mortal Kombat. Uh, WB Immortals and Injustice, you log into their service, and that seems to take care of it. The Angry Birds ones, and these are ones that it's their own service because they also sync to the Android versions of those games. If you mm-hmm. can log in with it, um, in the cloud, like I'm trying to, like, like I just downloaded the recent WWE 2K game, and I don't see the game showing up on my iPad when I load it up. You know, it's it, and and that concerns me because I'm then I'm worried about does that one when it does kick in right over the game I've been doing on my phone. so And, and a lot of them, I've seen them starting to prompt. Um, I can't remember if yes, it was they Marvel happen. Champions right. or Star one of the Star Wars games, but it actually prompted me and said, you've started, you've started a game on another device. Do you want to use those saves or do you want to start this device as a second account? Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. But All right. It, so moving on here, I want to move along a little bit. Uh, let's get into another popular one. The Roku, they have a box version and they do have a stick. Now I have one that was uh, uh, finally donated to me uh, uh, a bit ago. So I have the Roku one still. Uh, and it works fine. I have it on an old, not HD TV. I watch my Twit. I watch my Hulu. And uh, it's very useful in the office. Now somebody's got one over there on the couch. Still in the box. Wait, we're, have, we're having an unboxing party. <laughs> yeah, like, is that what's happening? Yes. And that's the Roku 2. Yes. Uh, the biggest difference between the Roku 2 and the Roku 3 is the voice activation. Right. And because I mumble a lot, it was decided that I do not need the Roku 3. <laughs> 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 because it would not be worth anything to me. Mm-hmm. Um, when deciding on a particular unit, look, there's an instructional booklet. It smells new. Hi, let's get started. Um, but Roku is a remote guy. Little boxy guy. Hello, friends. Uh, it's so small. And so the batteries. Especially compared to the one I got. <laughs> and then with the Roku 2, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I can, we can give you nice headphones. Look at that. That's cool. So you plug the headphones uh-huh. in the controller, and oh, then you just listen on there, which mm-hmm. is kind of nice, actually. Mm-hmm. But you can't do that with the stick when you have the remote. Okay. There's a plug. And some cables. These look real high quality. <laughs> <laughs> and those are just RCA cables. They're yes. not even like... I, I, it still has RCA in the back of it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to get HD quality, right, with this? The, the, no, no. <laughs> no, no. When you plug it into your VCR. But there is, there is an HDMI input. Okay. Or output, sorry. Okay. And he's got a little tag. So it's this little outfit here. Well, it's nice because, you know, we're talking about, this is the problem I have, is I have I only have one HD TV. And I have a bunch of, you see in the studio monitors, I have a few older ones that people get rid of, right? Mm-hmm. And I, and that's what I have in my office, and I love to have the Chromecast ability in my office, but I don't have anything with an HDMI, mm-hmm. the Fire Stick doesn't work for that, but it, it, this is like the best, like, I just have an old TV, I want to throw something on, she's opening it, that's what that <laughs> sound is, if you're on audio, all that, that peel-off plastic Whee! action. Now, now tell me, so you, you, you picked this up, but there's a problem. I don't have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you owned a TV in your home? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have one in Mount Washington. Um, gosh. 
early last year. <laughs> no, yeah, April or May before I moved out of the apartment. Okay, it's not, it's not feel bad. free to take any one of these <laughs> with you. <laughs> well, no, I know we, use this. I, we, we can use it. Yeah, actually, I got one in the that, corner that right for you. It'll help you it'll help you lift it. It's pretty big. So, um, so what are you gonna what are you gonna plug that into then? Uh, but, okay, so I don't want to jump into the smart TV discussion because. An issue. We, we, we will in a moment. Yeah, an issue. I've been trying to figure out where, I, what direction I was going to with the TV because, oh, you know, the smart TV is kind of fun and, and looking and seeing what device to get and comparing what I wanted to use. And I'm discovering, well, maybe I will leave this for a smart TV discussion. Sure. But uh, the, I, I don't know much more we can say about the Roku. It's a it's, great, it's a great interface. Uh, it has a WWE network that was one a of WWE the network. <laughs> so they I'm actually just... uh, WWE network was was selling Rokus on WWEshop.com with a year of like selling Roku wow. with a year of WWE network. Hmm. Like I as a package. The, I think there's more to say about the Roku because one of the things I hear about Roku is it's like the easiest device because of the way it accepts DNLA, mm -hmm. DLNA. Um, to there's there's a lot of free hidden services if you know where to look. Right. There, right. There's so many channels that are out there to subscribe to, and you can make your own. Uh, Doug. You can make your own. I, 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 yeah, I think there's a lot more to be said for Roku. Mm -hmm. To me, like Roku's like the open source. We're gonna give you all kinds of channels out of the box, but if if you actually want to take it a step further. There's so many more places you can go and generate content. And to your point, people can make their own stations. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I heard, Roku was like the number one way if you cut the cord to find alternative broadcasting for sporting events. Right. So, so I, I oh not not on the up and up version yes, right not, that's like I said alternative broadcasting methods um, for sporting events and now but, you know how I'm watching hockey <laughs> oh no <laughs> but, but I mean that that being said I I think this device buying this device to the point of the Roku one still around and, and two three and it'll continue I I think there's the longevity of of the Roku device is is there, where I think you're going to see, you know, a Chromecast two after a while. TiVo comes out with a new device practically every year. Mm -hmm. Amazon's probably going to continue to update their devices. Roku seems to just add devices with more capability, but all the older devices continue to work well beyond the average. I don't know, three to four year lifespan of a of a technology device. I do not like the Roku stick. I want to break my Roku stick. What happens? <laughs> what happened with the stick? The I like Roku. I think Roku is a fantastic service. Well, yes. Tell, what's what's one of the things that you told me to get it with it? Why? The Sling. Ooh, oh yeah. Well, Sling TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is fan oh my God, Sling TV is fantastic. Uh, so you can you pay twenty dollars basically for up to like twenty channels, which yeah. fantastic. I, I love that, and I get all the old TV channels I used to watch on cable. So I would get TBS. Uh, TNT, uh, AMC, like four cooking channels. Mm -hmm. Plus, I have ESPN came with it. It's the biggest bridge, if, if uh, as far as a service to be like, this yeah. is what I'm used to, right? But the downside to it is, I don't know if it's on, on this case, if it's the Roku that's buggy or Sling TV. But when Sling starts, you get a black screen every once in a while. So you'll see like two seconds, and then it goes black. Mm -hmm. I've emailed Sling, and it's taken them three months to reply back to me. Ooh. So their their customers, although they're getting bombarded too, because it is like the hot thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But my my big issue with the Roku stick, and not the actual Roku box, is that the stick is very slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it loads Netflix, it takes a long time for that to start. Right, and on my other devices, especially using Chromecast, it's fast. So now I'm like, the and that's antsy. the word I get on the Fire TV stick too. Is like it's not quite as fast as the box. Things will take a little bit longer, but right. I don't have a comparison point. It's still faster than my original Roku box. For instance. I think it's slower than the Amazon stick. Okay, it, it's pretty sluggish. The when it comes down to the channels, though, for it, yeah, uh, I love that Twit's on it because it mm -hmm. saves where I've been watching it on Twit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Amazon. Uh, Fire TV does that for me for the Twit app as well. Twit That's seems nice. like the only one that seems to be working with that. Um, yeah. Because with Netflix, I, I've been watching Daredevil also, and yeah. 
it will go back to the beginning of the episode. Ooh. And I hate that, but I but, now but, I have to make that middle note. But that's always that that's that's a it's an app thing. Like yeah, that, that's that's a, an app thing. Because you gotta think they have to design the app for each device and right. try to make all those things work. Like the WWE network experience of all things, probably because it's still so new in comparison to Netflix, Hulu, everything mm-hmm. else, um, is the most junky of everything that I do. Right. And uh, it just that experience is just so widely different. It doesn't carry over what you've been watching sometimes from 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 tablet on iOS right. to 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 that. Um, it, it's going to happen. So, but unfortunately, you pick a device based on who has the better version of that app that you use oh, too. Yeah. So yeah, I just I've noticed it, it's it's sluggish even when I go between menus. Sometimes mm-hmm. it just sits there and hangs with that the spinning Roku logo, which is like the the spinning ball of death now. <laughs> So, so, so then I have to restart it. Mm-hmm. But also, I only paid like $30 for it. So I'm not, yeah, that's I'm not really complaining too much. I, and I love the remote. And you want to be a power user by the box. Yeah, that's right. what it's coming down to. And honestly, I'm, I'm thinking about <laughs> I'm not thinking about getting a Roku. I'm actually thinking about getting the Amazon one because of I'm looking at going into Prime for yeah. a lot of stuff. And that There's would work out for me. But it's yeah, Roku's been it's been a decent service. I, I even, I, Channel selection, though, I still think is kind of... Does, does Roku have... An Amazon Prime app? It, it does. I think it does. It does. Okay. It used to. It, it did like, on the old one. So yeah. Um, but again, that experience in the games. I think Amazon it, Instant Video. There are some games this on the Roku, but uh, not quite the, the games. You, I mean, you still have to pay for them, and it's like well, you do. You do for a lot of them on the on yeah, the but fire it's like tic tac toe and chess. Yeah, and yeah. It's... They're not good. They have like the Angry Birds was the biggest thing for a while, but they only yeah. really put one Angry Birds on it. And the Angry, it wasn't it. very good. It never took it. off. It never took off. Um, but but I think you also got to think, and there's also Android TVs coming out. The, the the Amazons are basically the Android TVs, but done with a little bit better shine to it. I think so. Anything else on the Roku before we move on? I, I like that it has a remote. I mean, it's yeah. the Roku Stick has a remote, which that trumps it almost over Chromecast. For it. it's right, nice right. when I'm laying in bed it's just, and I it's can just accessible. Yeah. yeah. Or because because the biggest thing of Chromecast is I've done something else. Like, you know, like she was saying, saying you know, texting, calling. Then I have to go back to the Netflix app. Hope I didn't bump off the Wi-Fi. It <laughs> needs to reconnect for a moment. So, <laughs> yes, you've got the same. This is one thing I love too. Is so it has a, a button for Blockbuster on there. For block what? There's yeah, a blockbuster, blockbuster button. button. How how old is that? There's blockbuster, Amazon, MGo, and Netflix buttons. Ooh. Jeez. <laughs> And they should just put like AOL TV yeah. and <laughs> while we're at it. Cast. Yeah, I, TV I will say I was excited when I started looking at the channels available mm-hmm. and I saw about five or six barbecue stations. Oh. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fantastic. And all it does is aggregate a bunch of really bad YouTube videos. <laughs> I was so disappointed. I'm like, I'm going to sit in bed. I'm going to watch barbecue. This is going to be great. And this yeah, is I'm like looking. A Friday or Saturday night. Of course, because that's what I do on my weekends. Just I just drink beer. I I watch barbecue videos, and I'm like, this is kind of disappointing. Like it's it's pulling in these really crap videos. All right, I want to talk about a couple more here before we get out on this cord cutter special for Awesome Cast. But before that, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting uh, Pittsburgh podcasting with great pizza. It's Slice on Broadway. We got it right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> there it is. They've been enjoying it here. They came in. There was actually yeah. a fight about who gets to come in the studio tonight because we only have so much couch space. Mm. And uh, there it is. <laughs> SliceOnBroadway.com. Check them out. They're right on the tracks here in Beach Road down in Carnegie, PA as well. Uh, we were just there, uh, as we mentioned on the last show, last week for, for Dunner's okay. birthday. They made a, a Hello Kitty pizza. Uh-huh. One was a dough doll. Mm-hmm. So it was awesome. <laughs> it was great. Oh, they're not afraid to try new things and uh, and a lot of fun. Go check them out on Facebook, of course, on Instagram, or uh, go ahead and follow and 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 and, and hit them up. Uh, PGH underscore slice on Twitter and let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast. So let's get right into the big box. Mr. Pshilla, you, you mentioned this. You got into this a little bit at the end of the last week's show, but why a TiVo? That seems like such an old school what? thing to have. A TiVo? Really? So, like, so I might as well as just a, stay on the cable, right, Sheila? <laughs> Tell me why I'm wrong. As, as a true, so if we're going to go to the nth degree cord cutter, right? Um, you can run a TiVo off of a phone line and an antenna. And it will DVR any of your channels you can get. So as a 
I got roped back into the cable subscription for a little while. And I think I'm going to go back to the, to the true cord cut. Right. Um, TiVo got me 30 local over the air channels, including kids programming, um, et cetera. And, and if you are at a house that doesn't even have internet, um, and all you have is an antenna and a phone line, like I said, you can actually DVR and get a full guide, um, for for the TiVo and and the, there is a monthly service attached to the TiVo. Um, I think you can get and you can actually if you you can pay an, an additional premium and get it get it for your lifetime of the device, not mm-hmm. for the lifetime of the account, but the lifetime of the device. Um, throw internet on there, right? And you get all your local programming, full DVR functionality. And I, I have actually three different models of TiVo. One has two tuners, one has four tuners, and one streams from any of the other six tuners in the house. Um, but you can then, they have the additional, your additional subscription services, like you have Netflix and you have, I think they have Hulu and they have uh, Amazon Instant Prime. Um, there's there's a number of services that layer can layer on top. The one thing that they actually do extremely well is I, uh, Marvel Agents of Shield. So I watch that and I, I DVR that. And you can actually rate the the what you're watching on on the right from your controller. You give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. And because it knows all of your services that you subscribe to it will actually up in the top bar give you uh, for lack of a better term an advertisement so based on based on the fact that i just watched agents of shield it will put up in the top of the screen you would probably like to watch um oh, what did it show uh heroes hmm. and it said this is now available right now available on netflix the the cool thing is is it only shows you stuff that you have access to for free. So if, if, if you if you don't have Amazon Instant and you don't have it configured, it's not going to give you anything that's available on that service. It's only going to so show you what you have out. access to. And I don't know much that does it to this effect. So like, this is the most impressive thing about it. And I'm looking at the website here as you were talking about it. Like, their accessibility, like, they, they really are forward thinking to make sure this is still relevant. Um, you know, I get... I get an update. I probably get an update every two months. The, two to three. You can months. actually schedule re- your recordings from the iPad. Uh, that's, yes. that's awesome. You can schedule the recordings from the iPad. You there's you can actually control. You can use the iPad as a controller um, inside their controller app. If you have multiple TiVos in your house, you can actually pick what TiVo you're controlling. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use the app. You can use their website. You can use pretty much anything that has an internet connection. Um, to schedule the recordings, you can see what other people, what, what's popular that other people are recording. Mm-hmm. The other cool thing is, is when you talk about, you know, DVR rental, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're a box subscriber, like Comcast or, or, or Verizon Fios, whatever. So com or Verizon actually convinced me into subscribing to their, their service. Mm-hmm. And I said, they said, well, we'll ship you your box. I said, no, 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 no. You'll ship me a cable card. So based on the fact that I already had Fios TV in the house and I had coax, um, all I did was take a little card and put it in the back of the TiVo box and poof, I had all, all of my existing recordings, all of my over the air content, all of those additional apps, um, it just so happens that the cable there's a cable card decoder that then decodes all of the encrypted Verizon FiOS transmissions. So for almost no cost a month versus paying for a, a, a box rental where I own my TiVo, um, it's it's just a little card I slip in the back of the, the box. And if I ever decide that I want to get rid of uh, Verizon FiOS, I call them and say, cancel my card and I'll ship it back to you in an envelope and away it goes. Nice. Um, I know, Dirty, you were, you showed like you packing up all of your boxes for, <laughs> I, for I think it was Comcast or whatever, all the big Motorola boxes. Oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was Fios. <laughs> that was Fios. Yeah. Fios had the same box, which was really depressing when I got that from Fios, oh, but it was still a nicer interface. Yeah. The Fios, yeah. So, so Fios has gone a little farther than Amazon on the interface, but like I was saying, TiVo, 
I get I get updates to mm-hmm. the apps, I get updates to the operating system on the device, and right. I've, they've gone through numerous UI updates, um, going from you know low quality 480 um, to 1080p menus. Uh, and, and I just don't see the cable companies really making the effort. And, and uh, like I said, I'll, I'll go back to the fact that I, I can, maybe I only get 30 air, thirty channels over the air, mm-hmm. but I can record six of those with no problem. Now, see, here's an issue that I, I have with over the air. I don't know if this if this can get alleviated with, with uh, TiVo or how it's going to handle it, but you know, I noticed that with the... When I do over the air with the, I guess the the antenna that I have, the leaf that's hanging okay. in my window, uh, you know, when the weather gets bad, it gets pixelated. I, I lose picture. There's times where I can't pick up WPXI because it's you know the wind's blowing too hard or mm-hmm. there's a lot of rain. It's, how does that affect the TiVo? I mean, does TiVo have a way to decipher it's, that to give you a smooth picture, or is it whatever you would see? I think it's whatever you would see. You can definitely get signal strength of what you're getting out of the tower. And that's the one thing um, there's, I think it's like an antenna web.org or something like that is a website that will actually, you punch in your um, home address. Uh, if you're a single story, multi-story home, what's around you. And it will show you the direction and the distance and signal strength that you should get out of your local um, channels. Um, and that's what I actually use to base the position. I, I have an omnidirectional antenna, but it helps me decide which side of the house and where I put it in the house. So that, like I was saying that our house is all hooked up with coax and, and everything. And I actually took one of the coax jacks upstairs, figured out where the drop was in the basement and reversed all of the the jacks in the rest of the house. So my antenna goes into a jack upstairs and then all the way downstairs into a splitter. Um, the other thing that I did do downstairs that I that made a huge difference for me um, was obviously my antenna's powered. Um, so it plugs into the wall and sits in a window. It's actually sitting right over there. And then um, I have an amp downstairs in the basement so where, where that comes into the basement, it goes into an amp, and then before it splits off into the other rooms. One of the things I'm looking at doing is uh, the previous owner of my house had Dish Network and left the dish on the roof. And talk, like, like like me talking to some friends <laughs> I still of mine. Have a dish out there. I haven't had Dish for five years. But uh, we've never had Dish. <laughs> but he had the house wired for FiOS before we moved in, mm-hmm. and I was talking to a, another friend of mine, uh, Meat Shield from. Podcamp, Meat Shield. Meat Shield, yes. So he's <laughs> he cut the cord a long time ago, and he's like, "Dude, if you have this the satellite receiver or the dish still on your roof, there's an attachment you can get on Amazon for like forty bucks that w- makes it basically like the freaking Death Star of <laughs> you know of over the air." He's like, "You will not believe the quality." So once the weather gets better, I t- I took a look at it. And I'm like, I could very easily do this to my house. The downside is. When FiOS was installed, they cut the cables outside the house, but I know right where it's coming in at, so I just got to pull that putty out and mm-hmm. and redo it. But when I saw that on on Amazon, I'm like you got to be kidding me! I can, <laughs> my whole house is already wired for it. It's all I got to do is plug it in now. Once I get that mm-hmm. that attachment, and hopefully borrow a ladder from somebody. Is so, it, is it? Do you know? It, does it make the dish omnidirectional? The one I was looking at is okay. There's, they dish, have different models usually of Usually, pretty the, the the satellite dish itself is meant to be focused because it all the satellites for dish and or, well, I don't even know if Direct is still around. All those different satellite companies, the satellite sat sits over top of Texas, I think. So, you, so, cl- so to have a dish, you have to have clear line of sight to the southwest. Yeah, that's the way mine's pointed. It, it was it was actually funny because when I, the apartment I had in Oakland. Um, they actually had to mount the dish at a, at a very odd spot on a pillar on the back porch because <laughs> all of the houses around me, the, where, wherever their chimneys were, um, blocked most of the spots where they actually mm. wanted to put the dish. Wow. Um, but I, I didn't know that you could make that omnidirectional. And that's one of the things that I experimented too was with a, with a directional antenna that actually had a, a – 
supplementary remote that would c control your TV, but when, say, you would go to channel 11 WPXI, it would actually send a signal to the directional antenna that would then literally rotate a portion of the antenna oh, to remember, try to pick up a stronger version. I remember of the antenna rotators back in the day. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and, and what that did to the signal and everything. Because we have, yeah, we had extended. Because we were trying to, we're up in Mercer County. We we're trying to get some Cleveland, some Youngstown channels. From I could pick up uh, Canada from my Canada. house. Canada, yeah, because I was in Erie, so it was a yeah, straight yeah. shot across the lake. <laughs> there you go. I get some stuff in I, French. I up, well, that's I picked up City TV, so I always watch like Voltron. Back. that's how i got in, into that stuff nice. but it's i will double check and uh find out which one was the the omnidirectional they, i think that was uh kind of expensive mm -hmm. okay. more expensive than it was but you know for 40 or 50 bucks i'll i'll take what i can get i just have an yeah. antenna by my tv it was a little more expensive one and i get everything except for tae and if, judging by that site nobody that I gets up, tae it's the furthest out out east and uh, no there's, there's it, a couple it, mountains it, it, in the like, way. Like I said, that 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 should help you help you determine because it can because it, it can be as simple as moving the antenna up a floor right. and putting it right. That, I do have on the second floor with house. a cheaper like ten dollar antenna. Sometimes I'll get TAE and everything else comes in fine. So TAE man, comes I'm, in perfect and on my second floor. So and I right, have them right. directly above each other. One's right. in my bedroom, right. one's in the living room. Bottom floor, tons of interference. Right. You go up six feet. And it's I can watch all. And the, we're on the top channels. of the hill for the most part over here. You yeah. know, I'm just, in a gully. It's that distance thing. Yeah, you got. And that's yeah. where that's where I, like I was talking about running. If you already have cable and coax jacks in the walls, it's super easy to reverse what's servicing that that all the ports in your house. So, like I said, I I just brought the antenna up into one of the rooms, mm -hmm. plugged it into what, what what would have normally been the cable out out of the wall. And then you actually used a VCR to figure out which which jack that was in the basement, and then split yeah, off that, into every other room. Idea. So every room has two cable drops, mm -hmm. um, and they're actually all serviced by a single antenna. So I want to touch on a couple other ones here real quick. Of course, Apple TV has been the long-standing one. Uh, I feel it's limited. I'm hoping they open it up soon. I, I think it's it's severely limited, and in fact, if you're the one thing I will say about the original Apple TV, Apple TV one TV, the first gen, the big white box, mm -hmm. um, I still use it because it has a hard drive in it and it'll sync with iTunes. Nice. So you can load a bunch of media up on it, which I which I do appreciate. Um, the one thing I will say about Apple TV is their content delivery network is above and beyond right. what most other people have. So they are like for Netflix, they are this they have portions of the CDN that are serviced through Apple. So instead of Netflix servicing or Comcast maybe messing or mucking with the the data, um, they require that they're they're more stringent on how how well the apps are going to work on the device. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I think their their UIs tend to be a little cleaner um, and higher quality. Right. We use Apple TV at work and basically all that we use it for is to show our, our desktops. And and and, Chrome, and Chromecast it. can be used in a similar ma manner too. We have Chromecast for all the for anyone who's on a PC which is basically our CEO. Yeah. Everybody else is on Macs, but but it's, it, I mean, but it's nice you have that option. Yeah. And, and they're only $69 now uh, competing really with that Roku that that, that KU has over there. There it is. There it is. Um, so I mean, it, it, again, it's getting more affordable, and that's not too much more than the thirty, forty dollars for the sticks that we've been talking about. So. The the, pro the problem is, and they need to solve for it real quick, is they're getting too many channels, so their UI is getting very cluttered. Yeah, because they're not. They're just everything's there, regardless if you subscribe or not, which seems just very short sighted. But it, and if you're if you're a person that uses. I, I will say their their home sharing works really well. You put a machine with iTunes on it, and any media you have on there, all of a sudden, will show up um, on the the Apple TV. Mm -hmm. And then their their video rental works really well, as well as the fact that I have some some movies that I bought or got in digital format. Um, that I mean, you just plug in the code, and boom, you have you can stream that video and i will say their content looks a lot better than some of the other digital 
streaming services or digital copies that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Also, smart TVs are an option, but there's a little bit of a problem with that. Uh, you, you can't upgrade them, for one thing. Um, and actually, kind of uh, accentuating that, we kind of all knew this was coming, but there was actually a, a, a story coming out this week applying to this. YouTube app is no longer supported on older TVs and outdated iOS devices. Mm -hmm. So when they're saying like like the older iOS 6 ones, which means maybe my iPad won't be that useful anymore because I can't watch uh, YouTube on my iPad 1, maybe after this. But for you bought that expensive TV, that smart $1,500 smart TV a few years ago, and now you can't watch YouTube on it. And there's no other option for you. Um, so, so I have a I have a question about that. So and and maybe I'm just my. So I have a Samsung smart TV. Um, my Samsung has a quad core processor in it, and they were the whatever. It was great, and it, it sounded all pretty. I'm not a huge fan of the apps, but what I will say is, it has an app store where I'm getting app updates. So I'll be interested to see this whole YouTube thing. It'll actually make me go back into the smart TV portion of it to see if it continues to work and update. Um, the other thing I will say about my Samsung is I probably get an operating system update, I would say, every six months. So they're one of the better ones. So I'm wondering, am I going to see the same thing that maybe an older LG did or maybe not all Samsungs are like this? Mm -hmm. Um I, like I, like I, the the UI is not bad. The problem I have with the Samsung Smart TV is the apps in the App Store. It's like they didn't spend a lot of time on their UI. Right. Like the Netflix app. It looks like it looks rough. It looks rough. Well, and they're also saying, like, for this story in particular, in particular they're saying that the owners of pre-2013 Sony and Panasonic TVs and Blu-ray players, as well as game consoles, may no longer be able to access the app. So, that, pre-2013, that's that's crazy. That's just a couple years, you know? Yeah, and is, I think it, that's where your technology is not keeping up when, you know, you get a TV, you have it for, what, five years at least, even with these newer ones, right? Yeah, and to your point, like I have, we have uh, Blu-ray players that have Netflix, and, and they they're they're Samsung devices. They continue to update right the operating system as well as the apps on the device. So but, I think this is going to be a small sub, even with the the 2013 and and prior. I think it's going to even be a small subset of of mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. um, but even it's probably the fact that the manufacturer said, you know what, we're not going to provide updates to this device. Anymore. But even with that, you can always, if this thing gets out there, you start, you can't get a lot of the apps that you want to three years down the road. You can just grab a stick. And, and that's where Samsung, and it's not the device I have, but one of the things they've, they've touted on some of their newer TVs is that smart TV portion. Cause obviously it has some kind of CPU and mm -hmm. space and everything else. I've, I've heard that Samsung as well as some other manufacturers are going to start making it more like a module that you can remove and upgrade and replace. I, I'd love to see that um, happen, but that, they've been talking about that for years. It feels like. Well, and, but I saw it on a Samsung device that like, okay. Stairs, um, where you, where it was a removable component and it, it almost, it almost reminded me of like a, a Roku or an Apple TV that kind of just, fit into the back of the device and it had like the, the the pinch plastic prongs to remove it and add it um add a new one so mm -hmm. that's where i will say that a lot of these devices are so small i'm surprised we don't see more companies embedding chromecast into the tv roku into the tv <laughs> you know i do notice i i don't know if anybody else notices any other devices like rokus or anything but when i pop up uh like I, when i hit the chromecast button it actually gives me an option for my Chromecast or my Fire Stick. Right. And I know that's the open source, was it DNLA? Yeah, I think uh, so. Standards. So I have I mean, that between that is... the Chromecast and with the, the Netflix, or Netflix. The, <laughs> yeah, that other stick. The, the Roku. Roku. There we go, the Roku. So th that's part of it. And like you talked about yeah. the open source DNLA thing. So, I mean, that's not, you know, it, it, so it's kind of building into those things. So it wouldn't be surprising to see a pop-up and something like that as well. Uh, I want to touch on here, uh, video game consoles, of course, a big option. That's what I started on, really. At a certain point, I was watching most of my stuff on my Xbox. That was the big cord cutter thing that I had. 
was the Xbox 360. It's just so damn loud. And and started getting, you know, a little long of the two, started getting a little slow with the apps and everything. And then Chromecast came along and 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 and, and looking beyond that, I had like, you know, like WWE Network, Amazon, that's what I still watched on the Xbox. That's another thing. Some in, in some cases, uh, Comcast and some other cable co- companies, that can be your box, much like your TiVo is, right? Um, well, and that's where that's where I the, the Xbox One in conjunction with the TiVo mm-hmm. to me is just if, if you can. Uh, it's a lot of hardware in front of your TV, man. It's a, it, well, it's it's <laughs> two boxes under your TV, but yeah, it's, yeah. And, and people are going to say, well, that's really expensive. Well, it's probably six months of cable. Yeah. Um, so exactly. there's your there. It's not that bad if you've been paying for years of cable. Um, but I will say the Xbox One, and I'm I'm just going to say it again. The, the the voice control is above and beyond anything else I've seen, as well as everybody that creates an app for the One has video capabilities in built in to mm-hmm. the point where like the Vivo Music Video app, mm-hmm. um, you can completely navigate. The, you can completely navigate all the apps with your voice, which to me nice. goes a long distance when you have right. a, a child that needs to be picked up and fed and, and whatnot. And also remember, like even if you have like the original Nintendo Wii, they did add Hulu and Netflix and Amazon, I think, to it as well. Uh, and and if, again, if you have an older TV like I do in the office, that's where I hooked my old Wii up. And and when you know sometimes I was having Wi-Fi problems with the older uh, uh, Roku, uh, I'll just pop up the, the Wii. And and it's a little newer, a little quicker than than that old box, and uh, it's another option. Or if it's something for the kids, right? That's in their playroom or something. And you still have it because you don't because you're trying to buy the stick. And you don't want to buy the new expensive <laughs> consoles, right, Doug? <laughs> well, <laughs> before we bought the Wii U, we had a Wii, and we watched mm-hmm. Netflix on there. Yeah, yeah. Because I will well, say, Netflix is like the gateway drug. It into, is. Mm-hmm. It is into cutting the cord because once you get sucked into those shows, you're like. Oh man, why am I watching anything else? Because then you start binge watching. Yeah. Right, right, right. And it's just a slow progression. And they're like, oh, well, all right, I'm going to pick up Slim because, I, well, I can get HBO on there too, HBO to go. And yeah. And it's, yeah, it, it, it can get it can get fun really quick. It and out. it's on a lot of, like you said, it's on a lot of devices. Just about everything in our house has Netflix on it. It's almost hard to not end up with something that has Netflix on it these days. Yeah. And which it's is interesting. If, if I didn't have so many problems with Hulu, Right out the bat, uh, mm-hmm. we probably would have stuck with it. We live on it. We but like it's, that is like it's still referred to as the DVR in our house because it replaced that function in our house. Oh, I could see, yeah, I could absolutely see because that. because it was like well, you, you come home, hey, what's on the DVR? You know, I'll check out this from the last night, this from the other night. You know, we don't know when no like, night stuff comes on anymore, and we <laughs> haven't for the longest time, even when we had cable. I have no idea what's it's, on TV. It's anymore. I have a free night. Okay, what do we have stacked up in the queue? And let's just run through it, or let's go to Netflix and oh, well, Daredevil or or, or Orange is New Black is on. Let's run through a few episodes of that, you know. Or we're going through all the old Supernatural because we've never watched it. And my 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 sister and nephew got me completely into that show, and I'm <laughs> four four seasons in. And it's amazing, you know. Uh, well, it, we like, start like that. We start rewatching like the Wonder Years is on. Oh, like, the, the whole series of Wonder Years, Friends, and uh, uh-huh. let's. I wa- actually I watch Seinfeld every night at I think it's seven o'clock because you, it's on TV. You can also recreate. Mm-hmm. I can come home from work and watch Transformers just like back in the day. <laughs> the, all there's the, also, all the by the way, there. there's also a Hasbro Classics channel on Amazon, what? and it is just. And those have been on Netflix as well, but there's a few things on there that are no. not, that haven't been on Netflix. And I think they've been taken off Netflix and they come back and forth. I know. Um, so yeah, there's like it, it, Roku has those weird little channels too. But there, but Amazon has has, has a few. Um, you know who would enjoy that? Huh? Would be Loco Bone. He's the guy that we need to get to watch that and oh, give us a review of that. Damn straight. I love the old trend. It's, it's it's awesome. You know, it's like I'm I'm sitting there and I, uh, the one local channel Cubo that yeah. some people get if you get yeah, Ion in your area. Uh, they they had uh, an hour of He Man at midnight, an hour of oh, She Ra at two, at one oh, in the morning. And I'd fall asleep to that every night. Then I'm like, why am I mad they took it off TV? Because now I can go watch it without commercials on Netflix. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just, just like, come home. You know, if I could if I could find GoBots on on Netflix, <laughs> right. I, I would be right. set too. Because yeah. right. I, I was a GoBots fan back then. Because that was one of the only shows that would show up in Erie when we could get a signal before cable. <laughs> uh, we can have a whole other Transformers versus GoBots. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love the Transformers. Got all the GoBots. <laughs> because we... <laughs> I still have some GoBots. I have Leader One somewhere at my oh, house. Oh, I got... I got oh, oh. Dude, someday. <laughs> I'm just going to, because all my old toys are in that closet. I'm going to haul them back down from Erie. 
Oh, man. I actually have a section of my mom's. We're gonna have a right side. Is a, we're gonna have a side podcast something where we just like like look at the old toys I have, you know. Yeah. And I really think that would, people would dig that because yeah. they're like, I remember that, you know. Wait till I bust out the mask vehicles. Damn. And I have the figures with their helmet. Well, I hope they still have their helmets after my kids have played with it. But I have <laughs> classic WWE figures, WWF figures, and arms reach as a bushwhacker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that is one that I, yeah, that's a whole other story. Anyway, so enough of that. Uh, I think we covered that. I got some feedback from people about what they're using. Alex Cars out there in California says he, uh, wow, that got really weird. Chrome, Chromecast. Oh, this I'm sorry, this pasted weird. <laughs> okay, we'll read this other one. Uh, DJ Lunchbox Will, that was on here a few weeks ago after uh, a month off of social media, says Apple TV, PS3 in the living room, Chrome, Chromecast in the kitchen. And this other one went off. Uh, Juggalo John says he got uh, Daredevil, or uh, Netflix for Daredevil, but uh, has been watching Lost Girl, <laughs> actually. God bless you. Lost Girl. I don't know Lost Girl. I don't know that one either. So, uh, Orphan Black, I want to see. I keep seeing that Which pop up one? on the Amazon. Orphan Black. It's a BBC one, and apparently she's a bunch of clones. Ooh. And there's just like a bunch of her, and it's just starting season three. And now we're talking about mask in the, <laughs> in the chat room. Oh, geez. Um, but anyways. For the, for the record, I had the Boulder Hill play set, too. Whoa. Jeez. He was the king of his uh, class. Um, AJ actually uh, uh, messaged in, Roku Streaming Stick, Synology, NAS, and Plex covers the big three services, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, too. Um, it, it, that's the other options. Plex, I don't want to get too big into it. Kind of more geeky. You can read more into it. But you, you have an old PC, Mac, something like that. I know Munz, I, he was using an old uh, G5 Mac Mini to do a lot of his stuff. Um, it works fantastic. I got one upstairs. I'm thinking about just hooking that up for the hell of it. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it, mostly I have it because I have an old, old Photoshop. I want Missy to start learning. Um and uh, AJ, or, or I'm sorry, Alex Allen, California says Chromecast and Xbox 360 are the main TV things, quote unquote. His phone and iPad to watch stuff on the go, and that's the other thing. Anybody, everybody has smartphones. A lot of people, I mean, kids. You, I mean, hand them. I don't know how many parents just hand the kids the phones and they watch uh, the Disney app or something. This is something to bring up about Sling app, which, mm-hmm. like I said, I I like Sling. It's it's starting out. It has a ton of potential to mm-hmm. replace what we know as cable TV. The downside is only one person can watch it. So if I'm watching it on my right, phone. Right. So right now, I am sure that my family is probably watching TV. <laughs> so I could get on my Sling account and boot them all off. They'd probably wow. get a bunch of angry texts. Wow. The other downside to it is some of the programming on, I think it was like A&E mm-hmm. and History Channel, is still copyrighted through other companies. It's in syndication. So when you're going through in prime time, A&E will pop up and say unavailable. Right. And you can have a four hour window with that. Right. It's unfortunate, but also I'm only paying twenty dollars a month for it. And and this is one of those I'm things I think is gonna get worked out over time too. Oh absolutely. Mm-hmm. So but I yeah, and I definitely want to do this again. I want to do another core cutter special and we'll talk about the services themselves and those kinds of issues. But I hope we've given everybody a pretty good wide breadth of these are the devices to look at. This you're making hand motions. Wide breadth of you're just going to pantomime what I'm saying over here and hold up your boxes. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of options out there. Find the one that fits for you. And it's pizza slice on Broadway.com. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> and let us know what you're using. Any questions, anything like that. And there's and there's certainly far more options than this. My, my mom got like a Western Digital HD TV something or other, too. And I don't know why. And I told her not to, and she couldn't figure it out. Um, so uh, so th- there's a few options. Please let us know what you think. Um, uh, oh, hey, uh, uh, pertinent to this, speaking of online TV, Doug, I know you were excited about something that, that happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I totally geeked out today. And then I saw, like, Sork had commented on the same thing that I was watching. It was a mini awesome cast today, oh, actually. It was great. I saw it right when I came back from lunch, too. I was so excited for it. I probably just blew out everyone's eardrums when I, I realized what, what we were talking about here. The Screensavers is back. Yes. Coming back May 2nd. I am so happy. Now, this... what was the Screensavers, for those that don't know what that is? Wow, way back in the day, like 2003. In the white old age of 1998. <laughs> back when we didn't have all this digital cable stuff. You were just celebrating your 40th birthday. I, oh, 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 I don't like you anymore. Wow. I was in my 20s. But Leo Laporte of Twit fame, yeah. the tech 
you know, this week in tech now, but they was in, in all the people there, they used to do the screensavers and it was a fun, they could, they're calling it kind of a tech variety show. And, mm-hmm. and, and this is where, you know, Alex Lindsay given, given Photoshop tips and, and, uh, the, the, the Kevin Rose, the dark tipper who now like is freaking venture capital guy at Google, oh, yeah. you know, uh, and it's, it's so popular through so many other things. Um, and, and, and it's going to be more of a video show. They do more podcasts, talking head things like we're doing here kind of uh so there's not a lot visual on twit although they have a great studio and a lot of great video um but this is gonna be like that old style show you think about the other people so there was what sarah lane was on there um mm. kat schwartz was on there there's a lot of people that you know, is one of the reasons why i got really geeked out about doing video on the web finally. right exactly it, it, this was the only place we had to go to learn about what was going on there was yeah there were websites but it was all people like our age that were right. really geeking out about technology. And it's, and Leo was kind of like the dad to a lot of us like, Hey guys, here's what's going on. Let's, let's, let's talk geek. And we're like, yes, somebody who understands. It was, it was because at the time, uh, well, for me, I grew up on like sci-fi on Sunday, had this CNET block of shows. Oh, yeah. Right. And it was like the download, the, the daily download oh, the email ZDNet that she was, was in. ZDNet, ZDNet was what was, was what became tech TV. Yes. Or ZDTV. I'm sorry. was Z- became Z- tech TV. Yeah. Uh, CNET had uh, like an hour kind of tech block, like a gaming half hour. And then like this general technology thing, it was like cool tech or something like with Ryan Seacrest before anybody knew who the hell he was. Go look it up. Uh, it's great. Yes, American Idol. <laughs> it, here's a, a quick bit of trivia for you, too. Mm-hmm. I was actually interviewed by them in 2004, April 2004. For be- screensavers? No, uh, on, C- on CNET. Okay. Because I had a flip phone and I was it was the first camera phone, basically, from Sprint. And it was like it was a mad rush on people that were starting to document their lives. Holy crap! Here it is. And and they started talking about <laughs> will mo blogs mean mo money with yes. Douglas Durda? What? what the heck? What? <laughs> what? I'm pulling this up. Hold on. So so back then, uh, I got into I was taking pictures, and I there was a thing called Text America, which yeah, was really big. Yes, yes. And I I I started to become friends with a lot, and I'm still friends with a lot of those guys. And I was the official you know governor of Pennsylvania. Because I I took like what? two thousand photos, like I went crazy with their service. I'm like, this is fantastic, and I met people all over the country. Well, then Text America, I think. And by the way, this is this service. is dated on April first, and it's not an April Fool's joke either. <laughs> I thought it was when the the guy got a hold of me on AOL Instant Messenger oh, of all things and said, <laughs> I saw I saw your website that you're putting up photos, and I saw Text America. Do you want to talk? And and then it started. That was like the first time I, I was ever published in something that wasn't man, like my church bulletin or you were you were the man because I always wanted to get into the text America because I was starting to hear about it. And, uh, and they, I never got my T-shirt, and I still hold those guys. Oh. Kevin uh, Slack working or slow working was his name. You still owe me a shirt, buddy. Like half, and the I'm people, send this to him. half the people are at Twit or doing other or being supported by Patreon by now. So. <laughs> I don't know if that's happening. I snap pictures whenever I can, said Douglas Durda, a 28-year-old web developer in Pittsburgh who has been mo-blogging since November. Mo-blogging, quote, satisfies that bit of vanity in all of us. Everyone deep down wants to be a star or recognize in some way. Or or recognize in some way. With a mo-blog, you open yourself up. for the whole world to see. Was I not predicting the future of what? Oh, look at you. I'm a visionary. Eleven years <laughs> ago, you were talking about this stuff. See, I wasn't forty then. <laughs> <laughs> it's on record with it CNET, is. the 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 site of record. <laughs> on April first. <laughs> on April first. <laughs> wow, we're sharing that one out. Um, and the funny thing is, so my boss was across. I did it at work. Yeah. Uh, when I worked for a company, a tech company, and um, my boss across the hall heard the interview, like when I was doing it over the phone. And he's like, that will never take off. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want to do that? Who, you know what? You, I was getting into like, I was in Friendster and MySpace. He's like, who wants to act like they're in high school all the time? <laughs> Apparently <laughs> everybody. <laughs> all right. All I'm right. going to send him the link to this. So Robert. You see what happened, buddy. <laughs> Flip this out. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, um, 
Jeez, I don't know. We, we should close out this. But we got to get going so we can talk video games with the guys from InsertCoinToBegin.com here on this Tuesday night. Uh, please go check them out and check out everything. Uh, first of all, uh, Doug, plug something. Roku. <laughs> I love that the box does match the color scheme of our titles, by the that way. Yeah. Good pick there. Hey, you can check me out at DouglasSturta.com or ShouldIDrinkThat.com. We are currently in the middle of Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week, Ooh. which is a celebration of craft beer in Pittsburgh. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not drinking right now, but I am all week and Yet. I am tonight. So I yeah, got yes. vodka upstairs. Uh, um, yeah. A lot of craft beer. No, but it was probably made in Pittsburgh. We make vodka here and whiskey and rum and I think it is a Pittsburgh based one. So there you go. Is Click from here? No. No. Okay. They're advertised from they here. They advertise a lot of stuff here. So I'm not big on the vodkas, but Katie. Hi. Where can people find you and what are you doing lately that people would be interested in? I am Kate Edders down there, not Doug. <laughs> uh what am I doing now? Oh gosh, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm finishing up school. Um <laughs> geez, at least for this full semester. Social media. Yeah, yeah. social oh man. Um I'll be working with uh Point Park and pimping out all their new uh school of communication uh masters programs, including like a social media one. Mm -hmm. Concentration, so we'll be able to actually she, study things. It scares me that people are gonna be coming around with masters in social media. Mm -hmm. I always said when I when I, when uh when I see that happening and I see the art institute like maybe advertising social media stuff on TV late at night while I'm watching Frasier that I need to get out of it. <laughs> so <laughs> got to find the next thing. But, uh, but no, I, I, but I'm not quite so scared. It seems to be. It's, 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 it's interesting. Like it, a lot of it's a lot of what I like about it is a lot of theoretical things where you're mm. kind of looking at it from different viewpoints, but there's also the analytics and things mm. that people pay a lot of money for, but you can get through a university instead of having to go out on your own for a lot of these kinds of classes and instruction right, right digital marketing degrees are starting to turn it into like half it half marketing mm -hmm. which is what we need more of because a lot of the old school marketing people have no idea, no idea. what any of this no. stuff is mm -hmm. right so right. throw your money at me that's that's why that's why some of us that have kind of built this on our own probably do okay <laughs> so. mm -hmm. i'm not complaining no i'm getting no. free pizza right now there you go yeah. There you go. Can't right say this podcasting thing doesn't pay off. So, Chilla, he is, damn it. Uh, Chilla on the Twitter. Is <laughs> somewhere down. Yeah, there Starting we go. to see your view. Can, well, you, can, you, here. can oh, you see downtown Pittsburgh from where you're at? I think you're from that angle, right? Where I'm from what angle? Uh, I, 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 I've i seen your view out your window. It's getting dark enough now. Yeah, it's um, pointed probably towards downtown. Yeah. Uh, I can see the steel building and a melon building and a couple other buildings from, from as far up as I am. Um, John Chilla on the Facebooks, Chilla on the Twitters, and stay tuned or come back next week because I got another new toy. And since we didn't do Ooh. awesome thing of the week, I have the Motorola 360 oh, um, that I'll be reviewing in conjunction with the S6 that we talked about. Uh, probably two weeks ago prior to its launch. Can't wait to talk about that. Thanks, everybody. Check everything out at awesomecast.net. Oh, I'm at sorgatron.com, <laughs> sorgatronmedia.com. All kinds of fun stuff. Sawtooth Willie talking about Star Trek this week. Um, wife of the show got to lose weight thanks to John Cena. Find out why over there and at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, video games at insert coin to begin.com, time to ramble.com. And uh, that's all I got right now. Uh, so uh, check us out, awesomecast.net, for this and the daily mini awesome cast. And uh, please check us out on the social medias, uh, all linked in, and subscribe to us all on the website as well. And uh, big thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for the show notes and the tweets all night long. Thank you to our awesome chat room at live.awesomecast.net. You can join us too at 6 p.m. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. And uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.